Hey guys, it's Amy and it's Friday at four. All right, a little after four. And it's time for another free motion uh, video from the So Simple Studio in Alta Vista, Virginia. And I've got a special treat for you. I have the M7 in the studio today. And I uh, thought I'd go ahead and set it up for free motion and we're gonna take it for a test drive. And uh, we've had it in the shop for a while, but I just don't get a chance to sit down and really play with it. And it is right in the front room of the shop. So, you know, customers always coming through. So um, it's a good time to play. So I'm going to turn it back on. So it goes through a little dance when it starts. You notice it has a uh, automatic presser foot as well, just like the 15,000. And I've already wound a bobbin, so I don't need to do that. That takes up too much time. One of the first things you would notice if you are threading a bobbin on the Janome M7 is there's a yellow triangle. And that's because this machine has a first-in-its-class um, visual sensor for the bobbin so that when it tells you it's running low on bobbin thread it has approximately 20 inches of thread left on the bobbin and so it has a different bobbin case so that it can accommodate that technology so i'm just going to put that on i'm going to use my favorite magic mint thread on the machine so i love that this machine has a cone stand on the back already built into it so that I can thread it nice and easily. I am going to lock the machine to thread it because it has that automatic presser foot coming down through the tension area up to the take up lever back down to my needle into here over here Push the lever, our needle's threaded. Gotta love that. All right, so we're threaded. You notice we just have a regular sewing machine foot on. Let me unlock the machine. Actually, one of the things that uh, is a new feature on here, let me lock it again. If I press a button to change out my needle plate, it comes up on its own and I can take it out and put it back in no screws no levers no nothing just push a button that's really cool all right so we're threaded now i always use my sew slip when i'm quilting this does have a nice smooth bed and an included table so you might get away without using a sew slip but i always like to use it so i'm going to go ahead and put this on i see my mom's watching hi mommy Love you. Happy New Year. So my sew slip clings to this so nicely because the bed is metal. It's an enameled metal. It's really tough and durable. And I need to get my screwdriver out. Check out the box that comes for all the feet with this machine. Right there. I can't move my camera around too much right now because of that thread stand deal there we go get my screwdriver out and I am going to actually I'm not getting my screwdriver out I'm going to use the little free motion feet I'm just going to find them they're tiny so one of the things I'm planning on doing while this machine is down here is making a few training videos on it I am looking at doing what I'm thinking of calling the Amy Quilts Clubhouse. And that is going to be a subscription program for owners of Janome machines of the Skyline 6 and higher models. And we'll be doing training on using the machine, getting the most out of the machine, free motion quilting, of course decorative stitching and even embroidery so hit me up in the comments below if that's something you're interested in I don't want to waste my time doing something if people aren't interested I know there's all kinds of videos out there all right so all I did is just change out the foot 
And then we are going to go to our little menu. This is a weird angle. I promise we'll have a better angle when I start to do these other videos. But this will do for today. So I'm going to go up here to the t-shirt icon. And I am going to go to... Oops. Don't start going down, Mr. Camera Mount. Oops, we're going down. We're going down. <laughs> Yes, the 9400, 9450 would be included in these videos that I'm going to do. Um, 12,000, 15,000, 14,000, all of those machines all would qualify. And I know some of those machines, like the 14,000, are hard to find information on because um, they're a little bit older. And... Um, sold a lot on the internet and you don't get a lot of support in person with an internet machine. So we're going to go up here where it has this little decorative stitch because that's going to take me to my section for decorative stitches and quilting. We've got this is your patchwork, your free motion, your ruler work because it has a ruler work mode which I love. So I'm going to go here to free motion and I'm going to use my straight stitch number two because that's going to use the little QO foot that I have on there. And let's see, what else? That's it. So I don't have to worry about putting the feed dogs down because the M7 has a great feature in that when your um, machine stops, the feed dogs go down, they're motorized. When you put them into the free motion setting, it also stays down. You don't have to push a lever. So that's pretty cool. So we are set up. I want to go ahead and check. This is my adjustment button. And just take a look at my tension. So the default on this is 4.6 for the tension. And I'm going to let that stay that way. I am pretty sure I will be adjusting the height here once I get my quilt sandwich out. So, and of course, one stitch to go ahead and bring up that bobbin thread. I am using the two different colors. They harmonize pretty good on this Moda Cross Weave fabric. I wanted to be able to see if we had any tension issues that I could um, mess around with it. So I do feel like I need to lower my foot. There we go. Let's hold it. Okay. And I'm just slipping on my gloves. So since we're playing with a new machine, let's just start off nice and easy with some loops. That helps me kind of get used to the sound of the machine. And the machine sounds very different from my 15,000. It's still quiet. But you can just tell that this machine has a lot of power behind it. It is faster and stronger than the 15,000. And I'm going to go ahead. The top looks fabulous. But let's take a look on the back side. I'm going to trim those threads off. Ooh, the back looks great too. Yeah, that looks good. I don't even see any pops of that lighter colored thread at all on the back. So all I did to change it from the default was to lower the foot a little bit. Um, I think if you're fairly new to free motion and have one of these machines, I think that you may want to slow down the speed with the speed control, um, which is just above the, the machine here. You can't see it on screen, but it's there. Just because it is very powerful, it does have the knee lift, so I'm using my knee to put up the foot and then put my threads underneath it. But yeah, the sound is different. So I'm just going to play around with some feathers.
And I'm just going to feather up the other side of this feather plume. Use that as my spine. So this is a free motion feather fill. We'll do a nice big one and let it curl around here. And then do another one. Let's see if I can speed it up a little bit. There we go. You know, learning the sound of a machine is very important when it comes to free motion because it is so linked to the speed of the machine. And of course, the faster the machine goes, the faster your hands need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. And I'm going to stop. Dial back that speed control just a hair because it is a powerful machine. If you like to do bags and lots of quilting, this thing will power through, I think, anything that you throw at it. I did see at the Janome Institute where they unveiled this machine, someone put something like 19 layers of denim underneath the foot and it went through it just perfectly fine. Um, so that's pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, I think feathers are a pretty good test of the tension on a machine because there is a big tendency to whip at the very end of those feather plumes with your hands. Your hands just naturally want to speed up in the curves. And I've had enough practice that I don't have a lot of that going on with my quilting, but I want to see how it's doing. Because this is, this is a new machine to me. Like I said, the only time I have had a chance to sew on it has been when I'm demoing to a customer. Look at that tension on the back. That, that's gorgeous. That's absolutely gorgeous. It's a good thing I still need to do free, uh, do machine embroidery or the 15,000 might just have to go. We won't tell it though, right? So let's get it back in here. Does anybody have any questions on the M7? Um, or questions about the foot. The foot is basically the same kind of foot as the 12,000, 14,000, 15,000, 9,400, And the settings are very similar as well. So if you've got those machines and have questions, please just send in a comment and I will answer them or do my best anyway. So one little stitch, bring up that bobbin thread, apparently stab myself with a needle. Let's see, I'm going to do some spirals. Hey Carolyn, how are you? So if you're one of those folks who likes to quilt fast, this machine will do it. You know me, I'm kind of slow and I'm trying to go a little faster. If you like to chain piece and go fast, this machine will definitely do it.
All right, I need to readjust my hand, so it's a good time to look at the comments. Sally makes a good point. She says, loves the small bulkhead around the needle. Lots of area to see what you're doing. She is right. They actually kind of stripped back this area so that you can see, and then there's a lot more height here. So you really have good visibility around there, um, which is really fabulous because I think that's that's one place that the long arm machines have domestic machines beat is the area of visibility and you can really see with this machine now I am sitting lower than I normally do because the machine is up on my table not set into the table but incredible visibility really like it hi Sue Sue's asking, would that foot fit the 6700 and would the club include the 6700? The club would include the 6700. However, the foot would not work on a 6700. So the 6700 does not have that automatic presser foot lift. So it goes up and down with the press of a button. Um, and the machine has to have that automatic presser foot lift in order to use this foot. So for the 6700, you've got your convertible free motion foot set. It comes standard with the machine. And you'll have an open toe, a closed toe, as well as a uh, echo foot. There might even be two echo feet. Got to keep all these accessories straight in my head. Uh, and it's a pretty good ruler foot. Uh, ruler foot and... Um, the convertible set pretty good free motion foot um, but yeah you got you got a little more stuff going on there So I tend to go a lot faster on these spirals, so I gotta speed up my machine so that my stitches don't end up being too long. I really like the sound and feel of this machine for free motion quilting. Back to a paisley. Mom, you know I'm doing a video. Don't send me a message. I love you to pieces. So I'm doing a little bit of a no-no that I don't usually do, and that is my hands are pretty far away from the needle, but it doesn't seem to be a big issue with this machine. I do think you don't want to get too far away because you don't want to end up doing one of these numbers or pulling back and having a wrinkle behind the foot. So, um, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to keep stitching just a little bit. And if anybody has any questions, now's the time to ask. If you've got questions about some of the items I shared or the idea of the Amy Quilts Clubhouse uh, subscription club, that's going to include live videos as well as recorded videos and a little bit more in-depth teaching, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I will try to answer before I finish. Uh, and then if you've just got questions about this machine or any other machine, it's a great time to ask. I got to go back to feathers. I love doing feathers. Now reposition my hands. Thank you, Mom. She says my spacing looks deliciously even. I have used a lot of practice. But I tell you, this machine is really smooth for free motion. And 
Let's see. Now I need to get back over here. I'm running out of Colt Sandwich. Let's do a nice little feather spine. I'll tell you, for a machine that's not down in the cabinet and sitting on top of the table, I really like how nicely it moves. Usually I feel very hampered when I'm using this machine or using any machine uh, on top of the table. It just feels a little bit more awkward, but it's doing really nicely. Let's see, I see a comment. The M7 does not have the ability to embroider. No, it is a sewing and quilting only machine. It does have 9 millimeter zigzag capabilities, so there are quite a few decorative stitches that you can play with, including several fonts. But no, it is not an embroidery machine. But uh, one of the things that Janome is really suggesting is that... Uh, if you want to do embroidery with the machine hoops getting bigger and bigger and the designs getting bigger and bigger and more complex with more stitches is the concept of having a separate embroidery machine and a separate sewing machine so that you can keep sewing on a project while your embroidery is stitching out. And uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, in fact, if I'd been thinking ahead of time, we could have set up the 15000 to embroider. We need a different table, though. Um, while I was sewing because I've got to get some samples done for my uh, Kimberbell Embroidery Club tonight which I'm really looking forward to doing All right, let's do one more check of the back of the stitches, and then I'm going to call it a done video. All right, so let me flip this back over the other way. And I'm going to say good night, farewell. And uh, thanks for watching. So this has been Amy from amyquilts.com and So Simple of Lynchburg. Bye-bye.